taking a peek at the media screen for the Kia Sportage. Now, there are technically two different ones that are available. So it's either going to be this smaller 8 inch screen or there's a larger 10.25 inch instead. The big difference is that this one doesn't have factory navigation, but it supports wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. The larger screen, on the other hand, has factory navigation, but it doesn't support wireless. So it's a wired Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. But if you want to walk through on that larger screen, you'll find it down in the description of this video. But let's walk through this smaller one instead. Starting off with radio, media, and a few other things along the side. So you could push radio in order to turn the radio on. You can hop into media to go between different sources. So AM, FM, Bluetooth, USB music, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. So you could hook your phone up just over Bluetooth if you wanted to stream audio that way. The other option would be to connect through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay to do that. Or if you had a USB stick with MP3s on it, you'd also be able to plug yourself in and use that instead. Star button along the side is a custom button. So it's what do you want it to do? There are two different buttons on the steering wheel and then there's one custom button there. So do you want it to switch out to your Bluetooth audio, turn the display on or off, which I actually, I kind of like the idea of that. And the reason why now is that if you wanted to just turn the display off, push your little star button, displays turned off instead. So if you find this to be too distracting, I definitely go that route. You can turn the audio on or off this way, volume rocker, tuning rocker, you can seek between different stations this way, or you can just enter the general setup screen. So you can get to the setup screen obviously by pressing the button there or along the top. Along the very top you've got a button there where you can edit the left or the right widget. So what do you want it showing? Same idea, like I said, it's a left versus right, or you can edit the icons. So what's showing up along the bottom there? Do you want to have your voice memos, radio, user manual, and things like that? So let's say if you don't care about having the setup there, you could flip it up if you want to, or you could drop down in order to be able to reorder that way instead. If you've adjusted the screen, you don't like what you've done, any changes would make this reset button appear. So you could just hit reset to bring it back to the factory default instead. You've got your time along the top, what station's currently playing, if you were connected to a phone, and then a series of other options along the bottom. So moving into all menus brings you to this summary screen. You can hit the menu button there to, again, toggle the display off, which is why I think just having that button for the display off instead kind of makes sense, but it's a matter of preference. You can reorder the icons again or scan this QR code on your phone in order to access the digital owner's manual. First up, so let's start off by adding in a phone. So you've got two options. You can have the phone connected for hands-free calling or Bluetooth audio, which is nice because let's say if you had one phone that you had all of your music on, but you only wanted to have one for phone calls, you could set it up that way. On this one, I'm just going to say yes to both. Turn Bluetooth on from your device in order to search. On your on phone? Your device, select the you want to make sure the pin numbers match up. I'll show you how to change the vehicle name in just a second there. And then it's asking, do I want to allow contacts and favorites to sync up? I'm going to hit no for now. So phone is connected. Do I want to use CarPlay with Kia? So wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, which is great. So yeah, I'm going to hit use CarPlay. Supports CarPlay, connect, and yes. Nothing too crazy there. Just going to hit OK. Was unsuccessful. It said unsuccessful. Like try again? Yeah, it said unsuccessful there because I said no when I first connected over Bluetooth. But if you ever get that message and you want to have your contacts downloaded, delete the phone, re-add it, and then it'll download your contacts there instead. But you've got Apple CarPlay. Beautiful. Nice and simple. So this is one benefit is that if you don't have factory navigation, you could rely this way instead and just use navigation through your phone. Now, on the Apple CarPlay side of things, it doesn't matter which map application you use. You don't have pinch to zoom capability. So if you wanted to zoom out, typically you're going to find it along the bottom. So you've got Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze that you can use right through the phone there instead, which is great. You can push there along the bottom. Waze users are going to know in order to be able to say whether or not something's going on, like police hazards and things like that. Searching for addresses very simply. Along the outside of the screen, it's your current date and time, connection status, which map application was open last, which music or radio application was opened, and which miscellaneous application was opened. This will bring you to your home screen. This is going to bring you back to this little icon view instead. But it's nice. And then audio inside of this, like it is, it's really good. And like the, it's so straightforward to use. There aren't a ton of different apps that you can use through the screen here. Like, and obviously you've got YouTube music and a few others, but it doesn't support video playback. So even if you're connected through Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, whatever the case may be, you wouldn't be able to play back video on this screen. No way from the factory to do it. It's nice and simple. 
I like it. Now there is one thing, one bug that you might run into is that playing the radio while you're connected to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. All you're gonna do, you press radio, tune to whatever station you want to, and once the audio is playing, all you're gonna do is go back home, hop back into CarPlay, and now you're gonna be listening to your radio while you're also connected to CarPlay there instead. So that is available as an option. Now for a second there, going back home to this screen. Now, one thing to point out is that on the phone itself, if you go into your general settings, CarPlay, find your vehicle, you can forget the car, you can toggle CarPlay off. So that means that if that's off and your phone is locked, CarPlay is not going to work. So I definitely just recommend making sure that's enabled and then you can customize. So if you're a fan of listening to podcasts and maybe you want audiobooks up there, you can adjust it. You can delete any of these icons. Well, the ones with the minus on it anyways, some of them have to be there regardless, but it fully removes them from the vehicle. It does have them on the very bottom. So you could push there in order to add them back in. If you don't like what you've done with the rearrangement, you can hit reset in order to bring you back to the factory default screen there instead. So very straightforward there. Now, if you hop back into setup, that brings you back to this menu, device connections, phone projection. So currently connected through Apple CarPlay. You can disconnect there if you want to. Go into Bluetooth connections, connect through. So as you can see there, it's not letting you run Bluetooth because you're connected to CarPlay. So if you wanted to actually reconnect just to Bluetooth, phone projection, disconnect CarPlay, Bluetooth, connections, connect back to the phone for hands-free calling and audio. And a few seconds in and you're pretty much fully, yeah, there we go, fully connected there again. So we've disconnected Apple CarPlay, you're reconnected Bluetooth. So you've got a few different ways that you can go about it. And then same idea if you want it to go back. Yeah, so because I connected no, or I selected no earlier. But then if you go back into phone projection, you can reconnect to CarPlay there if you want to. So very straightforward being able to set up a phone inside the vehicle here. Nice number pad, all of your basic information there. Then if you had multiple phones connected, you could simply swap that way. So let's go through and set up a Samsung or an Android device now. Next up, setting up an Android is the exact same process. So I've currently got the iPhone that's connected, but if you wanted to connect another phone, just go setup, device connections, Bluetooth connections, and then you can add in a phone. So I'm gonna add in, same idea, do you wanna add in for hands-free calling or Bluetooth audio? So I'm gonna say yes to both. So it's disconnecting the iPhone and then turn Bluetooth on yep. from your device in order to search on your device. Select the name that matches vehicle name on the screen. Perfect. Pins match up. So let's connect. Perfect. Supports Android Auto. Yes, let's connect to Android Auto. And again, same thing. It's a wireless Android Auto connection. So it's wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Connect through. Do I want to allow access to contacts? I'm going to say no to that one. But as you can see there, boom, fully connected. So you can see there you've got maps along the bottom. You've also got this button to go to an icon view, back to a split view instead. You can push map to go full screen map. One nice thing about the Android Auto side of things is that you do have pinch to zoom capability and very responsive there, which is great. Similar to what we saw on the iPhone side, so you could look at route options, you could do things like avoid tollways, ro um, toll roads, I should say, ferries and things like that, plus minus that way. You've also got assistance, so that's the same for the Google and the, uh, on the Apple side of things. So you could push there on the Google side in order to activate your assistant. There's also a voice command prompt on the steering wheel, you can push there to activate your assistant for Google or for Siri, so for your Apple side instead. Maps are available and a few others. Now on your phone, if you search for Android Auto, you can just connect to Android Auto there. Oh, select Android Auto, there we go. You can look at previously connected cars and you can customize the launcher. So very similar to what you saw on the iPhone side of things, you could readjust these icons if you wanted to. But one big difference is that any changes you make here don't actually come into effect until you get out of Android Auto and relaunch. Uh, I wish that that was dynamic like it was on the iPhone side, but that's how you do it. Moving back home, actually, let's go to our setup there. I want to show you one thing. Device connections and as of right now I'm connected to the Galaxy. So for Android Auto, so I'm just going to disconnect. Hopping back into Bluetooth. Got the active Bluetooth connections now. And this is one cool thing because you've got the option of, I mentioned it earlier, you can have one phone connected for 
hands-free calling, and then one connected for audio if you want to. So you can kind of do a mix and match between these four things. So it's either Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, but you can have multiple phones connected with differing, whether it's for the phone, for audio and things like that. And then it's whatever one is number one, that's who gets connection priority. If you move back, there we go, connection priority. So if you wanted to say who gets connected to first, you can do a drag and drop that way. Voice prompts, you can either play or mute. This is the one I'm looking for, system info, is you're gonna go into vehicle name in order to be able to change your name out, Bob's ride, Sally's ride, whatever the case may be. And then you can set up a unique passcode, but very straightforward. And then if you wanted to remove any of the phones, you just hit delete, select whichever ones, hit delete and yes. And it's deleted the phones there. And that's for, there we go, Bluetooth, Bluetooth connections, and the phones have been fully deleted from both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So it's that easy setting up phones inside the vehicle. Hey, hopping back home. And that's the basics of setting up a phone, phone projection, there are voice memos that you can record directly to the vehicle, radio. In some of my older videos, there was like an older tube style setup. It looks like this is now the permanent setup. So that older tube style is no longer available. It's strictly going to be this style instead. But using this style straightforward, so you could easily tune to stations this way if you want to. You can use the tuning rocker along the side if you'd like. Very straightforward. If you wanted to tune, if you wanted to save a station, tune to whatever station you want and then just hit a star. If you want to remove a preset, tune to whatever station you want to get rid of, deselect the star and it removes it that simply. You can move between AM, FM if you want to, HD radio, turn the display off. You can man manually enter a station in that way if you want to. Okay to tune. You could scan FM. Oh, station list. That's a big one. So if you're new to an area and you're not sure what you could listen to on AM or FM, you go station list and it shows you everything. And then you just star out whichever ones you want there. And then as you go to new areas, you also saw there, there's this little refresh icon. So when you go to a new area, you're not sure what's available, refresh, and it's going to show you what's up. So very straightforward using radio inside of this thing. Actually, let's go all menu, media, so series of options. So I mentioned AM, FM, Sirius XM, Bluetooth, etc. USB music is available there. There's digital owner's manual and then set up with some basic settings. One big one for the audio. So you've got your basic positioning. So if you're the only one in the vehicle, you want it focused on you versus centered. You can fine tune it there if you want. But sound tuning, what I always recommend, dropping the treble two, cranking the bass by three, tends to give really, really good audio inside the vehicle. Now, that beeping that we get there, if that drives you nuts, you could toggle it off if you want to. Along the top in order to access the digital owner's manual. Guidance, you've got a few other options. So whenever there's a warning that's sounded, it's essentially going to lower the rest of the vehicle volume so that you can hear whatever priority warning is coming on. You could turn those things off if you want to. I like that you can adjust all of the volumes here. So you can adjust the beep volume, ringtone volume, alerts, and things like that. And it's the same way for a few things. So connected devices even. So for Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, you can adjust what's going on with your media and then your voice guidance volumes there too. Startup volume limiter. So if you've got the volume cranked, turn your car off, turn it back on again. It's not gonna blare at you. So it'll start up a little bit quieter. And then you've also got a few options for noise reduction. Basics for device connections, which you've already covered off. Display setup. So as of right now, it's in the auto mode. You've also got an adjust manually, so you can adjust the screen brightness there if you want to. Locking out this way, you can have it for a day or a nighttime mode instead. So it's automatically gonna flip between a day or night mode, just depending on how bright it is outside. There is an available blue light filter. So one thing, you might notice some of these things are grayed out, and it's grayed out because you're either not using the thing or it's in an auto mode instead. So scheduled is grayed out because you're in auto mode, which means that when the vehicle determines it's dark out, it's going to automatically turn on the blue light filter, which is going to make it more or less warm for you instead. You can schedule when you want it to come on, but I always just recommend having it in the auto mode. Screensaver. So when we turn the display off, nothing's there, but you can have it so that there's a digital clock. Kind of nice. Analog clock though, with a few different watch faces. Nice. So we go, boom, I like that. That's classy San Diego. Well, you got a few different options there. Extended rear camera use. So when you're 
in reverse there and you go to drive at low speeds, it's going to keep that camera on for a, uh, for a second or two there. Perfect. And then from there, so we've seen all of the display options there, unique buttons, which we've already set up that custom one to turn the display off. Series of general settings, so nothing crazy here, nothing fun and exciting there. Storage info, eh. You can adjust the date and time there as well. So if you wanted to use GPS time based off of your location, you deselect to manually adjust. You can adjust your time zone and then whether or not you're on daylight savings time or the military time. So that 24 hour mode instead. You can change out your language to English, French, Spanish, or Korean. Adjusting your keyboard, so default layouts, media options. Let's see, what's the big one here? Radio off at startup. Eh. And then you can do a factory reset. So if you want to, if you're selling your vehicle, you can bring it back to the factory default settings there instead. You've got basics for Wi-Fi, nothing overly exciting there. Use Wi-Fi for phone projection means that you're using wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. If that's deselected, you could actually use a regular USB connection instead there too. So you wouldn't have to worry about going wireless. Wireless is nice, but some versions of the vehicle don't have a wireless charge pad, so you're going to be plugged into USB anyways. But that is cool that you can go that route if you want. Climate control settings. These things are always activated by default, and I always just keep recommend keeping them on. So auto ventilate, defog, defrost, things like that. Basics for climate settings, but there's nothing too exciting there. Back home, that's the basics for your setup. Media setup. So the, there's only one other thing to point out, and that's when you're in reverse. So when you're in reverse there, you've got your trailer guidance lines. You can go to your basic backup camera or like a hitch down view instead. So if you're backing up to hook up a trailer, it just makes it easier to line yourself up. But one cool thing is that you can also get rid of the parking lines. So parking lines are gone there. I'm personally a fan of having those lines on, but that one's a matter of preference. And then you can adjust the brightness there too. So if you wanted to make it darker, brighter, whatever the case may be, or just close out and you're set to go. I know that's quite a little bit of info, but that's all you need to know about the smaller screen inside of the Kia Sportage.